Fella, my man. How we doing? I love jumping back into this with you, bud. I was in a good mood, but now I'm in a bad mood. I'm not going to uh, lie. I shouldn't be. I am now. You want to I was in a fucking good mood, and I come in here, and I'm in a bad you mood. You want to restart? Now. So or? the Florida Panthers <laughs> might want to put me in their dressing room. Right? I, I They're going to gonna need more than an angry o- <laughs> They're going to need way more than an angry O'Brien, bud. They I'm are, right? about, they yeah. I hope that makes you feel good, because you're, you're not that angry. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not as angry you're, as those You're not as angry you know, as a guy that's going to come in that room and get these boys over a hump. That uh, let's just call it a mountain because they a, got a mountain. I, just, I, I wanted to yell from a mountain, but I didn't have a mountain. <laughs> I had a microphone. <laughs> hey, let's go, fella, to a recap, bro. Listen, you're a machine first and foremost. I think Thanks. people know that from this podcast. But you text me on Saturday afternoon. Shout out to we got we got on a flight. Thank God on uh, Friday. Yeah, yeah, but we'll leave it at that. So we got out of town. We did. We got out of town. We, Pretty, we ducked out of the fellow tour early. We ducked out of the fellow tour. I, I didn't have game four in me, man. So <laughs> oh, I did no. not have game four in me. We woke up to play golf with, with Gretz and Mess on Friday, and it all hit me, bro. The, the nose, the throat. If it wasn't Gretz and Mess and Janet, shout out to Janet, yeah. I wouldn't have played golf. Um, but anyways, dude, you text me on Saturday, and you're like, I'm on, look out your window, I'm on a boat. <laughs> I'm like, dude, I've had seven <laughs> fucking naps today. What do you mean you're on a boat? Yeah, I had the kids. I actually, you know, Tommy and Stacy, they hosted us in the boat, but I had like a nap in there with Beckham. I it was great. Right in the bottom. Well, I tried anyway. He was like fucking picking at my ears and being just a, you know, nine a month old. Yeah. Um, I'm like, just, can you just shut her down for a bit here with pops? Be nice. <laughs> Um, do they do that though? Like, but do you I just had grab some them? energy getting back. I don't know what it was. I, I felt pretty good getting off that bird. I mean, mind you, I drank for six hours on the plane too. Yeah, you I had did. a nice little shut ski. I shudder. I went. You know, we played cards, and I must have had. We drank two bottles of MJ's tequila, and I probably had ten coconies. No, you're a professional <laughs> drinker. There's no denying it. You're a yeah. professional drinker. But I fucking felt it Monday morning. Yesterday morning, buddy, I was, I was in rough shape. Loops text me, you want to come over for a burger? Yeah, I did that too. Sunday. I said, as much as I love burgers, no. He said, come have a drink. I'm like, I'm not drinking until at least Wednesday when we're taking Joe Whale and golf in a big can. I'm not drinking. I yeah. couldn't even look at a fucking, I couldn't yeah. look at a drink, but it was great. Um, first of all, we, let's go back to the start of the fall tour. We forgot to give, we were so banged up here last Tuesday um, playing hurt that we forgot to give our boy Travis from Toronto some love. Travis Agresti. Travis is an absolute beauty. Took us to dinner at a Delilah Carbone. Dan Carbone. Wow. What a guy. Spicy rigatoni, chicken parm. Unbelievable. Yeah. Caesar salad, too garlicky. Yeah, Carbone. Come on, Carbone. Yeah. In Vegas, too. We can't, be, we can't be eating that and then going out and trying to have a civil you know, evening. Of- you didn't think I was going to make that dinner when you saw me still sitting there drinking in the fucking. Okay, so this is, we can go back. You were a, you were a champ that day. I was. I had to go take day a day and a half. Up dog took a nap in Vegas, which is unique. You took a pregame nap like you're getting ready to play the match. I was talking to some people. I'm like, Up dog might be playing the night, boys. He's yeah. been sleeping for three hours. Yeah, like Gretz, he still has it in him. He still <laughs> sleeps, man. It's fucking crazy. But um, no, that's probably the only time I've ever taken a nap in Vegas. And it was a well deserved one because I was coming in off of like, you know, taking care of the kids and doing this stuff. It's. Yeah, no, I've realized too, job. like. When, when you get away from the kids, yeah, like sleep's important, right? You, you got a chance to have a little shutdown or sleep in. You're going to take totally. advantage of that. I, I get that after watching you have kids. And, and I have nephews. When I see my sister, when they go down, she's like, I got to have a nap. Or they get away from the kids. They're just relaxing, you know? Yeah. Yep. So I understood that. But I went for basically a whole day and a day and a half, two days in Vegas there. Yeah. I didn't have yeah, much. Yeah, no, that was a, ch- it was a full champ protocol for yeah. you. Um, and then, you know, I think back to Vegas, it seems like a month ago. Does, uh, we got it? a lot of content there. That yeah. was great, right? Yeah, Max and, killed it. And, and uh, you know, it was it was it was basically straight. Did we talk about how I got on the flight? Yeah, that was when I came right to oh, the yeah, pod. We talked about that last. Okay, week. so that we get that over. Yeah. So we had the pod last week, and then we jump on birds. It was a great flying with you, by the way. Yeah, a yeah. Jet blue. Saw mint. Matthew Schneider up there. Schneider, one of my former teammates. Told him the story about my tattoo. That remember you're you're talking about my tattoo hasn't my name on it. I remember I'll never forget. I got the tattoo in Vancouver and Schneid's Schneid's hat. He'll admit he's got like five or six terrible tattoos, right? And I come in, it's just freshly done, and I take my tarp off, and he looks at me, no, Obi, no. I'm like, well, fuck Schneid's. It's a four. It's a four leaf clover. It's not that bad, is he? he? Goes, when you're 30 years old, you mark my words. You'll look in the mirror, wish you didn't have that fucking thing. So, yeah. and sure to be true, 30 years old. So every time I see Schneid's, I bring up that story. Uh, good to see him. And the whole Florida Panther, I mean, that barn was rocking in game three. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was, it was a great, great atmosphere. atmosphere. Totally. Thanks. You know, and thank you to Matt Codwell, yeah. Sean Thornton, um, 
our boy Zach, the ticket guy, takes care of, you know, Vinny Viola. Um, they have a great, you know, they have a great product there. And it's been a hell of a run. You know, we're talking now here Tuesday, game five tonight, tonight. in Vegas. Whatever happens, happens. Their guys are banged up, Obes, and we'll get to this. But yeah. but they, they've they been on a hell of a run. Their fans, I mean, it was going bonkers in there. It was great. Right? When the overtime goal, just, you know, going fucking through the roof. But uh, thanks to their team for, you know, rolling out the red carpet. Um, did a little NHL TV hit with our boy, um, is Matt. It Matt Nicholson. Yeah. Had us on. YouTube, NHL YouTube. YouTube, NHL YouTube. We'll be um, doing a little more. We were bumping it, bumped into Patrick Hornquist, my old teammate who's been banged up, but I love Horny. Uh, Brian McCabe. Caber. Jovo taking Jovo, his golfing. K- Jovo's a beauty. Caber still looks fucking good. He's lean. Oh shit. He's living in he's South lean. Florida. He's fucking making dough still. And Got to meet Bill Zito. Playing golf. That was cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that was totally. cool. Uh, bumped into Gretz when he was all looking sharp in his suit, heading to TNT set. Thorny. Um, I mean, listen, then we got to meet your boy Kepka at the Grove. That was unbelievable. Yeah. You were, that was great. You went up to me like, buddy, I picked you for the PGA championship. And he's like, I like you. Yeah. What do you say? He's like, I like what people no, are I was like, I, I'm like, hey, you're a hockey guy, right? He's like, well, well, I'm like, hey, you're a hockey guy. We get a podcast missing curfew. Love to have you on anytime. Um, but we had to call out on air. You know, we always like to call picks and I fucking hammered you. Yeah. You know, going for your third PGA. And he was like, fucking right. You yeah. know, it was badass. I'm like, dude, I didn't take you at the start, but I took you after the second round. So you made me a little yeah. cash too. Yeah, and then his caddy, his caddy's a good Irish lad, huh? Totally. That accent, buddy, that's you're gonna hear like way oh, no. thicker than that that's when we like go to Ireland. Good, that's just a good Newfoundland accent. But, right but there. a couple of times when we were talking to him, I was like, I had to like lean right in. I'm like, what the fuck is this guy saying? But great guy, Rick, uh, Rick, Ricky Elliott, Ricky Elliott, that's Ricky him. Elliott. What a name! Yeah, yeah Ricky sounds like a fucking uh, like a singer. Or something. Yeah, we got to meet Justin Thomas. This is great, up boys. We walk into the fucking Justin Thomas is there. This dad who's his coach, right? And the U.S. Open's coming up. We're gonna get into a lot of U.S. Open talk. <laughs> up dog meets him first thing up he asks him he's like hey you going to melman's party on tuesday and fucking justin thomas looks at him like nah i don't think i'm gonna make it but i'm like up he's trying to get ready for the u.s open i'm like, like yeah but what better way than to go have a fucking couple drinks like, on a tuesday they don't they don't uh, tee off till thursday yeah i i i would think like no listen i mean if me and you were on tour yeah. i'd be going to melman's party with you too no, safe I to say you- dustin johnson probably gonna go yeah maybe yeah. Brooks, <laughs> I, 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 I justin thomas i'm like ah, he's not the guy yeah I'm, but you see him when he goes to the baker's bay with speed they take their shoes off they get all pinned i'm, I'm like so th- so they're, they're probably like it's no, it's open, like, bud. Yeah, but it's right there. They're gonna go over. I think. Yeah. I don't know. I think you're trying to get. I think he's trying to get. I just. I thought it was. I listen. A. I thought it was a great question. Yeah. He, <laughs> if I was on tour, I'd be going to Melman's party. It's probably why I wouldn't win the U.S. Open. But for him, he just kind of looked at you like that was great. It's, it's not waste management. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. yeah. He kind of looked at you US like U.S. Open, fella. This is the fucking. And his dad know. was beside him. It was his coach. His dad kind of looked up to like. These hockey players are fucking I'd say beauties. whatever he's doing, he should probably try to do some more, you know, mm-hmm. something different. But then he came out and was like, we were getting ready on the first tee and I was leaking oil. And Gretz is fired up. Mass Janet's asking me what I want to play for. I'm like, ah, whatever, Janet. You just let me know <laughs> what I owe you here at the end. I can't see the ball. And then JT, he's like, and one of our buddies is like, hey, how much 50 grand a hole if you hit my shots or something like that? So it was, I mean, that whole place is, is quite an experience. Yeah, the girls, uh, It was yeah. great meat mess. Yeah. Still in great shape. Oh, no. Great Let's shape. Think about this for a second. We played fucking golf with Gretz and Mess. Like hey, it's Janet. badass. Yeah. Right? Like I, I'm an Edmonton kid. It's like it's like ever to ever think you'd be just fucking teeing it up and mess being a lefty and like chatting about fucking Edmonton golf and like, you know, just being a badass. Gretz is just what it Gretz was, again it was just made 300 feet of putts on. I'm like, well, I know, I'm he, like, doesn't, he doesn't stop. Do you stop. putt like this every time or just when I play with you? All right. Like, you're just like, I'm it's, just trying to make par. I get up there and he just fucking rolls in. Like, I'm like, fuck, Gretz. Like, would you fuck off with that? Like, sorry, this, this great line. Didn't have a TV where you grew up. I'm like, no, I did. I get it. Yeah. But he putts so great. Yeah. No, it's amazing. It and was, then, um, it was, asking Mass, I waited to the 10th tee. I'm like, so Mass, how was that China club back in the day? And he's like, Phew. Ooh, lived right above there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he I lived up the street. You could see the twinkle in his eye. Um, <laughs> but it was great. And, and Travis, what a run Travis went on in Vegas at the tables, by the way. That was good yeah. momentum we had for him. That good was ed- great momentum. That's when you put good energy into stuff and it just like, boom, boom. Totally. By the way, he got me going. Thanks, Travis. You listen to this, that uh, the little, that little uh, double chippy that you gave me there, he really got me going. Yeah, so. yeah. Got me back in the positive, so. He knows what I'm talking about. And then the last but not least about the fellow tour, I got to ask here, like, where are the worst fucking drivers, Vegas or Florida? Because both of them are horrendous drivers. Like, I, I, it's just not safe. I, I don't Florida's, care what it is. It's not safe. 
Yeah, the, the taxi guy I took from the Vegas airport when I was late for my flight, I mean, he was weaving and fucking, he was doing some magic on the roads. Ah. I, I got to give him credit, <laughs> actually. And I was about to puke. Um, Our driver still, in Vegas was a good guy. Do you remember his name? There's no way. Diego? No, no, that's in Florida. In Vegas. No, the big guy. The big guy. That drove us all out to the practice drove us out to the practice oh, ring. Tom. You don't remember that? Tom? Is Tom. his name Tom? Big Tom. Big Tom. Good yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah, good guy. Came in and got the bags from the restaurant. Yeah. Yeah, he's a good dude. Good, big really Tom. good dude. And then Diego, what a guy, packed up all our bags for us in Florida. Huge. Us. But uh, the driver's there. Fucking call him a cause. It's every man for himself and woman. Look out, pulling out, like not looking. It's like, Jesus, what's like, are we just spoiled here in Newport with our nice big roads that are paved nicely? And I think they're not, yeah. Is that Sidewalks. what it is? Sidewalks. Old no people. fucking. We got a lot of old people no driving mutants. slow here. Like. <laughs> there's limited mutants running around. Limited mutants, man. I mean, where were we driving through Vegas? Coming from back from the practice rink to the, fuck the almost got clipped three times. I know. Big tall. I was guy, like, do you remember the? one? Were you with us? No, no Binger wasn't with us. Max was with us. Yeah. yeah. In the back, where the guy smiled and they were playing like ACDC and he had no teeth. Oh yeah. 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 <laughs> I thought we were gonna get rolled. Yeah. Those fucking singing guys. And the guy turns and looks at us and smiles. He's got no teeth. No, no teeth. And I'm like. I told you, mutants everywhere. <laughs> yeah, you like, and I'm like, where are you taking us? He's like, ah, this is a nice artery down. Uh, you know, you don't have to get on the freeways. This artery takes you right goes, downtown. I go, well, no shit, but we're going to get fucking yeah. lynched here. This is, yeah, yeah. this is straight shot. He said, we, I go, we took Trop from Summerlin all the way to the strip. Yeah. yeah. Eight miles or whatever. I'm sure there's some greasy, greasy rub and tugs on the way down from like in and around there. You think about every outskirts corner, of Vegas. Every, every other corner. They have that there, right? Hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. Totally. We drove by that car, flipped over. It was like three o'clock <laughs> yeah. on a Tuesday yeah, yeah. when all this was yeah. going on. And then this on the opposite like side a- of the road, there was there was another car went through the fucking thing. You and I don't say. mean just flipped over. I mean deep into this fucking apartment unit. Like he was. I'm like, <laughs> how the fuck did it get there? Like you got to make a tough play. And I was drunk. I'm like, I think I maybe I should drive here, boys. I don't know what's Oops going on. Just in my morning jacket and then just you know. Yeah, living so, love and life until all this is going on around us. Florida and Vegas, great spots. We love you. Maybe button up the driving a little bit because it is uh, it is concerning for us. So, uh, up dog, I wanted to talk about. We never really talked about PJ and the live last week because we were both a little banged up and we were taking short shifts. But um, listen, ultimately, I think this is great for the game. I think this is what they should have done right from the start. Like this is how I envisioned it. Right, like let's all coexist. Let's grow the game. Let's make it as big as worldwide as we can. I think once the PGA tour, and this is just my opinion, got into these lawsuits and realized how much fucking money these guys have over there. It's like, Whoa. So as much as Jay Monahan did a 180, and I'm not a huge fan of them. I think when business came to it up, they looked at the numbers and went boys, you know, yeah. much like me and yeah. you, when we look at the numbers of this yeah. curfew, yeah. we say, how much longer can we do this for? Like, I just think they realized like, man, we're in one, right? Yeah. Like, <laughs> I mean, this is a, a, this story, who knows what the hell's happening. We, we happened to play golf with, uh, you know, with Frank, who's the H, you know, the, the high flyers GM, GM. Good guy. CEO, great guy. Um, and he, you know, getting a chance to kind of get an inside scoop on, you know, what Phil was thinking or heard, like these guys didn't know anything and no one really knows anything. There's a lot of dark, like a lot of dark clouds around the whole situation. Monaghan being one of the only guys that probably knows you know, why he did it or, or what the hell they're even doing. But I, I mean, I've been saying this for years. They just need to set up a, a separate league, five tournaments, six tournaments, have it played with PGA's best and Liv's best. Don't fuck with Liv. Don't fuck with the PGA. If the Liv guys want to come back to the PGA and they can somehow create that agreement, which I bet, bet they're trying to do because these guys want, you mentioned it earlier. They want to play in the Memorial. They want to play in the players. They want to play in the big events, but they left. And there's still that bad blood between leaving and making all that money. So just make a world tour that PGA makes money on, Liv makes money on, grows the game worldwide. All the best players can play. I think that's the most important thing is just having the best players be able to play against each other on a worldwide stage. And that's what I think the joint venture um, can accomplish. Yeah. And then there's four majors that have been the history of these majors. And then there's going to be... Five more that are worldwide that be, that will start starting maybe hopefully next year, and who knows what happens? It, it just it's great for golf. Yeah, I I, I think it's great for golf. I would ask the Golf Channel. I still can't believe Brandel Chamblee's working there, but stop asking these fucking guys the question. They don't have the answers. Nobody knows until it comes out. Let's just focus, and we're gonna get into the U.S. Open next. Let's just focus on these guys playing golf, right? No yep. one knows what's going on when there's another announcement, but I do think the team event aspect is intriguing, right? Like, you know, we were just talking about JT 
you know, do they do these events? You said five of them where, you know, JT, Spieth, Ricky, that's a team. And they take on the high flyers. And then Rory puts a team together, right? Like the team aspect to me, you know, then you talk about Frank, he's the GM of the high flyers. Now do you have owners come in and buy the teams, right? Does Nike come in Nike's and say, I want to buy, yeah, buy Brooks to buy Kepka's team? Yeah, fuck yeah. Does a guy like, I don't know, whoever loves golf that's super rich, MJ want to buy a team. You know what I'm saying? Like stuff like that. I think there's, I think there's a good angle here for these guys to make a lot, a lot of cash. And for people out there that don't think at the end of the day, it's all about cash. Come on. It's all about cash. We all know that, right? You can yeah. say all the right things and this and that, and it's about cash. So um, we'll see how it plays out up dog. U S open week fella, LA country club, a track that we're both familiar with. Yeah. LA country club. If you don't know it there, you got to wear pants. If you Middle play summer, July 17th, yeah, yeah. they got to wear pants. I remember I just had the old monkey bum going yeah, there. The a one little, day. It keeps it classy, but not I, when it's hot. I remember the first time I think Stoli Babe asked me to play LACC. I, I, I didn't own a pair of golf pants. He's like, you got to wear pants. I'm like, I don't, I don't own pants. I don't have any pants, Stoli Babe. He's like, you don't own a I pair wear, of golf you're pants. Like I wear black fucking Johnny V jeans I, I, yeah, or and sh- Lululemons. That's it. Yeah, or I wear shorts when I golf and I wear pants. I never, ever wore pants. So I think I had to squeeze in these old pair of slacks I had tucked away somewhere at 600 and a hook, but beautiful course. I love a West coast U S open mainly because we live out here. Yep. Don't got to worry about the weather. I don't know. I just like a good, I like a nice West coast U S open. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And the grass is good. I mean, look at the fucking, what they've done to the course. Mint. It looks mint. And, uh, um, what was I going to say is the clubhouse where they have the clubhouse obes, where they have their, the golf channel set up. Like, it's parts of the course. It's just nice knowing and being so familiar with the course. I think they're only moving through 20,000 people a day out there. It's not a lot. Perfect. I'll be one of them on Saturday. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's not a lot. Like you go to these, some like a, a Ryder Cup, you can barely see the fucking game. You know what yeah. I mean? It's, so you're going to be able to finagle your way around. You know what they did do two ups? If people who live in California appreciate this binger, you're a Santa Monica fucking hobo. Just joking, buddy. Love you. Um, <laughs> They built a walkway from, from Century City across Wilshire. Oh, nice. So you can park over there and walk across. You know, yeah, everything. I got Colin yeah. driving. You can drop me right off at the front. I'm going to get right in there, get some merch, grab a beer, have a day. Who's got the setup over there? I, Dennis, need- shout out to Dennis Shannon and Citrus Motors. Oh, they got a nice little tent. Yeah, I got, I'm going with me, Dennis, and Thomas J. Doherty. Nice. Colin's driving us. It's going to be nice. I'm nice going to be walking around Bonnaroo on Center. That is two different ends of the fucking spectrum there. Um, for you people out there, the beauty's back home. Uh, the Playboy Mansion is on number 13 in LA Country yeah. Club. The I monkeys, monkeys the are going to be crazy in there. Remember is the it monkeys? still the Playboy Mansion or did they sell that fucking thing when, when well, I took a dirt nap? I tried going up there a couple, it was probably like two months ago. Me and my buddy tried to drive up there to check it out and we got uh, run down by the cops. They have like security cameras all over the place. With yeah, that yeah. Dirk Diggler stash you got going on there. Yeah, I'm sure that wasn't the best you. look going huh? up there at the stash. If, if it was the 70s, they would have let you right yeah, in. Like, You're on set here, bud. Fire up that fucking here. Take a C-ball. I need the Hefner rope. Bandana, some roller skates. Fucking guy just wheels right in there. You've been in the mansion, right? Never. What? I've never been. You never went? No, all those midsummer night dream fucking birthday parties you guys were going to? No. <laughs> wow. I, I went three times, man. That, that, that was a little dream bit was before the best I moved out here. Were you dating? Were you dating? I was girl? dating. Yeah. yeah was you were, allowed, were you not allowed to go or what? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Fuck, you guys didn't give me the invite. No, I'm I don't kidding. know. You, you would have 100% gave me the invite. Yeah. You must have not been here. I missed. No, there's some highlights there I missed. I don't know how, how'd you miss the Halloween one during the lockout? Cause that's when Stoli got, when I made the joke, Stoli, Stoli got 13 of the LA Kings in. I'm like, you know who gets 13 guys in the Playboy Mansion besides you? Hefner. That's it. <laughs> Where were you on Halloween? You must've been. Cause that was lockout. Loops was there. I don't know. I don't know. Are you sure you weren't there for that one? What was that? 2012? I don't remember the years. No, I was, yeah, I was probably, I was still dating the ex and I was probably in Chicago for it actually. Oh, uh, yeah. Maybe. Fuck Chicago. Huh? Chicago. Shy town. Um, look at those odds up, dog. What, what are you thinking? Uh, obviously, the feel-good story would be Max Holm at plus 2,500 on DraftKings. I'm going to tickle Max for sure. Another one that jumps out to me is Colin Mar- Marikawa. Uh, plus 3,500 went to US cat. Went to UCLA, I believe, or oh, Cal. Wow. Right behind there. One of these fucking schools. Yeah. Can that's... you Google that for me, Binger? Colin Marikawa. I think he went to... I think it's Cal, actually. I'm going Kepka again. Plus 1,200 on DraftKings. You're, if it ain't broke, don't fix it? Fuck no. I know what he's dealing with, too. Yeah, like we we had a good chat with him, right? He's, he's sorting out his stuff, but he's... But he just fuck. 
He's dialed. He's is he dialed. not in his? Is he not back to where he's like mentally just ready to kick everyone's ass? He seemed pretty chill. Yeah, he seemed pretty chill. Hey, that was the first time I seen Dustin Johnson up close too. When we went, when we went by their group and DJ came over, yeah. he had a nice big chew in. But what? What a what a specimen. Yeah, big. Thank boy. you. That's the word I was looking for. Yeah. I mean, just tall and lean. And he played at Berkeley. Berkeley Cal, right? Yeah, Cal. But California boy, nonetheless. Isn't didn't Homa play at Berkeley too? Homa. Um, Max. I don't know. He might have finger. You got to Google there. Give her. Keep that. Keep those fingers working there, bud. Berkeley as well. Don't just use those for rolling doobies. And listen, I think. Yeah. <laughs> I, you gonna roll? You gonna spin up some doobies for Bonnaroo? Fuck for the time yeah! Six? I'm going old spin school. Spin a couple up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We need to talk about what my my regimen here is gonna be. It's gonna be a little different than it used to be. I know. I'm still gonna let it eat though. Yeah. Turn the clock back big time. Fuck you! Not like you used to let it eat, fun, are you? <laughs> oh yeah! <laughs> wow, I'll be, be bouncing around there. Don't you worry. Um, that's why I got to get this cold mm-hmm. figured out. I think go get an IV at the hydration room. I was I there yesterday. Phil, two hours. I think Phil. Can you pull up Phil Mickelson's odds on DraftKings? There, I, yeah. I, I got a funny feeling. A West Coast guy. Listen, we've played LL, LACC. You're gonna love the fans. Listen, the par threes. One's playing at 300 yards. Other one's playing at like 78. Didn't know Eric Cole was fucking playing in this. Eric Cole? <laughs> yeah, Eric Cole. No Eric fucking Hurricanes. Carolina Perkins. Yeah, he's playing. No, he's not, is he? Nick Taylor's in. Yeah. That's what he is. We're going to talk about Nick Taylor plus when, 20, when we get this guy a beer. Um, he's not going to win, though. He's coming Bill up. Bill Mickelson. Him. Plus 25,000 to win. Yeah. That's not bad. Could you imagine? This is his last year. I mean, this could be, I don't know. I just got a funny feeling that. I don't know. He's going to be in the mix for some reason. I don't know why. Top 10 or top five is plus 3,500. That's actually not a bad. Bet. Think about this though. So Phil came in played Sunday, Monday. Now he's going back home or he played Saturday, Sunday, flew back to San Diego Monday. He's not coming back to Wednesday. Where did well, he play last weekend? Uh, they didn't play last weekend. Oh, so you're just saying. Well, he, so he saying? played a practice round Saturday, Sunday, oh, flew, and back flew back to San Diego yeah. for Monday, Tuesday. He's coming in Wednesday. Is that not? No, that's perfect. Perfect? Yeah. Fucking 20 minute flight. Rest of, rest of the legs. It's he, literally like, no, it's not even getting in traffic to go to your hotel. He just fucking beelines it to the airport. He's home in 20, G4, Burbank. whatever. Where would he fly G450, out of Burbank? G450, fucking, who knows? LAX probably. No. What's the closest fucking, you, you know, airports um, up there? You, you just, Van Nuys isn't far from there. It's, you know, 20 minutes. Uh, I, I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with Max Homa as my pick. I'm taking Max Homa to win it. Nice. I'm going with this, this, the local kid, the LA boy. He's got the course record at 61. He does. Are you taking Kepka again? I'm taking Kepka again. Wow. It says plus 1,200 on here. I think I got it a little bit better on my bookie. If Kepka wins again, <laughs> wow, that'd be unbelievable. Fuck you. Yeah. Um, all right. Up is world. Party time. Excellent. Excellent. You got a new show for our listeners that we were talking about here before we jumped on the air? Uh, yeah. Here, shit. What's the show called? Um, Idol or something you said? Oh my God. Is it, is it just pure fuck These fest or what? Are, it's, it's Break it, out the Jergens? <laughs> bottles of it. The coconut oil? <laughs> What's it about? Well, it's about this. I guess, you know, after watching the, you know, the, the end of the episode. It, it's called the end of the episode or whatever. And it's the producer the speaking, doing like the behind the scenes. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So it's the guy that did Euphoria. Great show. Right? Great show. Dark. Love twisted. that blonde chick in there. What's her name? With I the know. Big boobs. I love her. Yeah. Okay. So you're going to love this <laughs> more. Um, so the story, sure. he describes the story as he was filming Euphoria 2. And the guy from um, the guy from the weekend who stars in this, his name's Abel. He comes up to him and tells us, you know, it has this story that he wants him to to do right sydney sweeney i know she's oh on anyway sorry go ahead okay so he has this idea of a young girl getting caught up in la she's a superstar but it's through her like you know struggles and the dark side of it all and then the highs and the lows and it's drugs and it's clubs and it's her in a sick fucking pad with her studio and it's actually his house so it's his house in hollywood it's fucking badass up in the hills yeah and it's oh, the first the first the hills the first scene is like this whole um day at the house that they have with her agents are all there and her friend who's like her manager it's like entourage a little bit dark sexy it's dark like she third. is it's johnny depp's daughter she's fucking smoking ally rose ally rose depp i think is her name let's just double check that and the first scene is her like doing a photo shoot johnny depp daughter. lily rose depp lily rose oh depp. yeah lily 
And so ah, nice cheekbones. It quickly turns from her doing this. <laughs> she's got Johnny's cheekbones. Up. She's hot, man. I'm she's fucking got Johnny's cheekbones. Even Christina's bro. watching this with me, just like she's like, "This is fucking sexy." I'm like, I don't even like this because I can't. It's not like I'm the one, you know, doing my. It's like you I wish you're. You, you wish you're in the show. Yeah. Yeah. She's like, what do you mean? I'm like, just, it's like being Michael Jordan. I, I'm not Michael Jordan. I can't, I'm not like the guy, you know, whatever. Okay. It's hot. Anyway. Um, <laughs> I'm going to go rub one out now. See you later, sweetheart. <laughs> no. So, so the this scene, the first, the first episode's crazy. It's her doing this photo shoot and then bouncing to do a dance, choreographed dance for her new song that her new hit. And then while she's doing that, like Twitter just goes buck wild. And there's a picture of her online with cum all over her face. And they don't tell her for the whole episode. And then they're like, and she's like, well, eh, it's not that bad. Hey, well, it could be worse. Right. And they're all like, uh, yeah, yeah, it could be worse. No, it fucking can't be worse. You fucking load all over your face. Okay. So then the, the story turns to her going out after this day. Of course, she needs to blow off some steam. So her and her, fr- her and her friends say, fuck it. And they go to this club <laughs> and the DJ and owner of the club is the weekend. And he's got like this rat tail and he's fucking weird. Like he's, he's kind of fucking, he's a little off. Right. There's yeah. something bad about him and she falls for him and he like does his thing and he comes back to her house like on the, on a date the next day. And I'm just giving you kind of the, the model of the first episode and comes over and she comes down into her studio, which is his studio in real life. And basically they have this fucking like, like he ties her up and covers her head and it's, it's like Portnoy style. Yeah. Yeah, no, well, like she, he's like suffocates her and yeah. like fucking kind of cuts her, cuts Porto the cloth style. right before she's about to asphyxiate herself. Wow. And it's full on. And you're like, holy fuck, this is on television? Yeah. HBO. So then I HBO, read, of course, baby. the next day I read up on all the, the reports and it's people, I feel like people are talking. All right. Yeah. Idol. It's a little, yeah, it's called Idol. It's fucking crazy. There's a I little mean, sneak peek into what's going on at the Upshow residence there when the kids go to bed, eh? <laughs> night, Izzy, night, Beckham. Fire on Idol, baby. Get over here. <laughs> I mean, fucking heads up, though. Listen, you sold me on it. I'm yeah, going to watch it tonight after the after I watch Ike's Hoist the Cup. I'll fucking throw on Idol here. <laughs> hey, Jesus. Sorry. On that note, Upper's <laughs> World, party time. Excellent. Break out the belts. We'll be right back. <laughs> welcome back to mr curfew uh up dog your beauty welcome back idol i'm gonna watch it set your tivo for idol yeah uh get this guy a beer presented by our good friends at labat blue first and foremost the rbc canadian open oakdale country club is where it was at which is actually kind of in the hood jane and finch in toronto but good old school track shout out to nick taylor won 1.7 bananas um listen to the canadian fans up, you know what? We come on. We've talked about Canada through the you know the pandemic and stuff, and there's certain stuff that we didn't like that was going on up there. But at the end of the day, man, was I proud to be Canadian watching the fans, Nick Taylor, uh, all the Canadian players rooting this guy on. It hadn't happened since 1954, I believe. What a putt! Fuck, was he wearing that rescue club out the way? Like he just kept hitting rescue, yeah, rescue, yeah, yeah. rescue. Well, I'm f- like four fucking playoff holes. I'm like, maybe he hit a fucking iron and give yourself a different number because you just keep hitting in the same place and you keep making the same fucking number. I, I know. I and know. he, uh, listen, that shot he hit with his rescue, he hit, hit that rescue 15 times in about an hour. He just hacked it up there and it took a nice bounce, got on the green, and then that putt. I mean, I was so proud to be Canadian, buddy. Yeah, it was unbelievable. Shout out to Nick Taylor. Get this guy a Labatt Blue. And to the fans up there, good on you. Because it was a great, great way to First represent the country. First time 55. 55. That's nuts. Nuts, man. What's better, the Mike Weir Masters or that on the home turf? Mike Weir <sighs> winning the Masters is pretty badass. I mean, it's against the best in the world. And it's the holy grail Do you remember? Golf. Do you remember Weir's last round? I don't know how he made, he made so many yeah. putts that were like six or seven feet. I, I do remember it. I was in Milwaukee. I was living at Dan Ham Hughes' house watching that. Oh, could be the nicest guy in the world, Dan Ham Hughes. <laughs> yeah. um, obviously, a major's more poor, but that was pretty cool, man. It was, Fuck yeah. It was, un- I mean, and Weirsy had a chance to win it back in the day, and old VJ Singh took it from him. I did, remember right? VJ was like apologetic about it. And you can see Fle- yeah. Fleetwood's never won in, in, on the PJ. It's crazy. He hasn't. And his big cat, he said, who seems like a good Irish or English beauty, said, after he birdied 17, he walked by that Colton Yost and said, people are going to be pissed when Tommy wins this in a fucking playoff. And Fleetwood, honestly, up, he had a chance to win it on that on the 18. He hit that iron like I would, a little fucking late on her. <laughs> and then he made par. 
but it was just it was an unbelievable experience and and it was just great for for Canada for Canada the rink hole I think it was 13 or 14 the part yeah, three the they're banging on the boards yeah, they're great. singing oh Canada that's so good I was proud to be Canadian at that moment so uh good on him and then speaking of another good Canadian shout out to the Denver Nuggets Jamal Murray good on, Kitchener Ontario boy about two and a half hours from where I live. My uncle Gary and Aunt Louise lived in Cambridge, which is right beside it. Mike Richards was the captain of the Kitchener Rangers. He wins the NBA title. Him and the Joker uh, get these guys a blue light. They won me some money last night up, dog. It was fun to watch. Good team. And the thing that I loved about this team was when you usually listen to guys in basketball, LeBron, it's all about me, me, me. Yeah. Joker was about the team. Jamal Murray was about the team. Their coach was about the team. I don't know. To me, it felt like almost a, like a hockey field, this guy. Yeah. So I was happy for the totally. Nuggets, man. Yeah, it's a great, great term, hockey feel for that guy. Yeah. I mean, after the game, him hugging all the Miami Heat guys going around organically. Like it, was, it, was, it wasn't a show about him at all, right? He doesn't want it to be about him. He doesn't want to go to the parade. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, no, I want to go home. He, he went by and hugged everyone on that fucking Miami Heat bench. The fucking guys that were on the bench. He looked around at all those guys because he knew like what kind of shit show this fucking court's going to turn into in the next five minutes yeah. and that he's not going to get a chance to pay his respects to the fucking competitors. And to me, that was as, you know, chairman-like, organic fucking, you know, play by the rules. And, and you just, his interviews before the, uh, before the finals started about, you know, we're not, there's no favorites in this. This is fucking the finals. We're both here. We're both champs. East, West, here we go. It's just fucking mono y mono now. Like, you know, he was very humble with the whole thing. Totally. And um, he didn't even, he, he got the Bill Russell trophy. His, his little girl is fucking yeah. as cute as Izzy was at that uh, age. I know. She was adorable. And, and he, he just left the MVP trophy there. <laughs> and the coach grabbed it. I know. Like, are you kidding me? Like, that would have never happened with any other NBA team. Like, LeBron would have had all that thing and more important than the Bill O'Brien trophy. But Can we talk about Stan Kroenke for a second? Dude, all he does is win championships. Win, 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 no matter what. Rams. Well, he won the Rams, Avs, now Nuggets. And didn't he win something over the soccer league? Lacrosse. Lacrosse league. Oh, like indoor lacrosse league. No, he won indoor lacrosse, and then his team... Fucking came second in the Premier League this year. Um, they blew it, Arsenal. though. They were first all year, and then at the last week, Man yeah, City Arsenal? jumped them. Arsenal? Arsenal. Fuck. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah, Arsenal. That's right. Um, yeah, so get those guys a blue light. Unbelievable. Um, yeah, I was blown away. Good for Denver. There'll be another party up there in the Mile High. See, that Aaron Gordon was out with his tarp off, just having a time. So, <laughs> uh, up, dog. Let's get into the Stanley Cup final. Game five is tonight. Um, listen. I think it's over. You know, we so talked too. about coming in tomorrow. You know, I think it's over. Now, saying that, this could be a good social clip. If Bobrovsky goes in there and makes 55 fucking saves tonight. And the thing I wanted to talk to you about is like, imagine, put ourselves, me and you, or whoever, just you, in Vegas right now. Yeah. Right? The Stanley Cup's going to come there. Think about all the distractions that you have. And, and, and listen, we witnessed it last year in game five in Denver, right? We had our great show yep. with all the alumni. We went to the game. I fucking yeah. put 10K on the DraftKings on the Avs to win the game. The, everything was lined up. We had the party. We we're going to go with the alumni. We we're going to hang out. Kemper lets in a squeaker in that fucking building. Like everyone's like arsehole. Like no, you, you can tell them it was puckered up before puckered the game up. even started. Puckered um, up. Vegas is going to need to come out and just have a good start. They got to get the first this one. This is the big reason why the, ba- the boys are banged up. Florida's banged up. You know what it's like to kind of come in with limited energy knowing like you're doubting you're kind of looking around the room you're like fuck boys just let's just fucking mustard 60 together here and see see what happens yeah. but a deep down you know that like you need bark off you need fucking maddie you need Bobrovsky to be the best player on the ice every game and when all those perfect pieces happen you might be able to beat the vegas golden knights because they're that good and they're they playing that good. that good their best players are playing fucking out of their minds right now aiden hills kicking their d or there's no rebounds there's nothing in front of the net they're well on um, machine aren't they and you know no matter what like y- you saw the way the families we got a chance to meet um uh, bo byram's dad during game four yeah, last year great. right yeah and you just understand that feeling of having everyone's family in town well that's what it's like in vegas right now their whole family's there you know i and, can't imagine like well, what do you do do you just turn your phone off like, do you try to have everything set up yesterday and then say all your friends, listen, I'm turning my phone off till after. You just make sure there's room in that Kygo box for after at excess. Well, I mean, that, that will take care of itself. 
But I'm talking about the ticket request and, and you say it, fuck off everybody and making sure that they get, get they won. can get down the ice after yeah. you win and you know you got ten fucking people and you know how you yeah. like do you just turn your phone off and say once it's over I'll grab my phone I, I just can't imagine like how hard would it no, be you, you don't change anything and if you're a guy that answers your phone you answer your phone like you know I bet you you text Ike's right now he probably answer you. <laughs> Right, like I bet. Should you, I fire him a text? There's say, guys you just say go get. Game, no, right? you say fucking enjoy the chicken parm right now and go get. Well, go get that last one, fella. I bet yeah. she goes thanks, Obes. Like they're they're looking at their phones. I've texted Ice between every round. Yeah, but I would never bug him during the play. No, you're not like, hey, bud. You know, a lot of pressure on you tonight. Like, no, you're not. <laughs> you're just Don't gonna throw it over in the middle, bud. You're gonna say fucking go get it. You deserve it, fucking fella. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm not gonna text him anything. No, but, I know. I'm not but saying imagine, imagine I did. That'd be hilarious. I would say this if I'm in the Florida Panthers locker room. We're down three. Just, I'm trying to put myself on their perspective too. Of, like, how hard is it to win? Like, think about everything that this team has done. Coming back three one, beating yeah. Toronto, beating Carolina. It's just like, I would say, boys, we've been here before. It's one game, and I would say, listen, they got the celebration. They think this is over. Let's go out there. We got nothing to lose, boys. No one's giving us a chance like yeah. they did in the first round. Let's win this game and yeah. bring her back to Florida. That's what Paul Maurice is saying. Yeah, Paul Maurice is. You know, the boys have had a little skate. He's now back. Fucking having a bite to eat right now it's probably noon he's going to go in his hotel room he's going to write down his pre-game speech obi and that's exactly what he's going to say he is isn't he yeah that's his message is fucking you know, no one no one's going to do it for us we've come back before um think of the magic that we've had in this room there's yeah. still some there let's fucking find a way to shut this crowd up early bob kick kick fucking guys get to the kick. net score some goals Play hard, because the minute you give these guys some doubt, you never know what fucking happens in the series. You can flip it fucking like a switch. You got to get the first. They got to get the first one. And then like Sam Bennett and Reinhardt one. and Duclair and Verhage, these guys need to step up and and just go fuck it. This is this could be the last game of the year. Let's fucking. Let's I would say, bet. boys, but yeah, let's leave it all out here. We've we've worked our nuts to get here. Like, w w come on, yeah, let's go. And then if, you know, I think we both think Vegas gets it done tonight. I cannot wait to see over the next course of Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, where this cup ends up in Vegas. Could you imagine, like, first of all, what's the parade going to look like? Like, are they going to do a parade downtown and then do another parade out in Summerline where all they, where all they live? But you have to do a, a downtown Fuck strip. Yeah. I mean, how yes. sick is that parade going to be? Downtown on the strip? Like, I can't even imagine what these guys, like, could you yeah. imagine playing for Vegas to win the Stanley Cup? That would be so no, sick. I don't even know. Fuck. They're going to be legends. It's, it's going to be legendary. So yep. uh, we'll see how it plays out tonight. Uh, Milk Carton presented by our good friends at DraftKings. Uh, promo code Curfew Cali. I'm going to tie this into if there is going to be a game six. There's a few more guys from Florida I could probably put on the fucking Milk Carton. I'm going to put Sam <laughs> Reinhardt on the Milk Carton. And, and Rhino, you're a good kid. You're still probably one of the drunkest kids I've ever seen at Coachella Music Festival. Um, you played a great playoff. You have zero points. Um, I'm hoping to give him a little milk carton bump here, you know? Yeah. I, if they are going to win this game tonight, I think Sam Reinhardt needs to get on the board. I think he needs to get one and one or something or score the first one. So Rhino, you're a good kid. You've had a great playoff. I'm putting you on the milk carton up dog. And then I'm putting the security guard yeah, on the there milk carton. Go. Yeah, you do it. Oh, fuck. Yeah. I'm putting that security guard, the tackle that Adam Hadwin. Fuck me, man. I mean, it's Canada. Do we it. have like, no one's going to hurt anyone up there. No shit. It's just champagne. Was he ready to tackle someone or what? <laughs> that guy was fucking three point the stance. Game, there's just so many great videos of it all too. <laughs> it's all time, right? It is all time. By the way, they're tucking that little empty bottle of uh, champagne in the uh, Canadian Golf Hall of Fame. Are they really? Just read that this morning. That's hilarious. Um, I mean, it's, it makes for a good story. Makes for and a the great fact story. that Taylor was watching him go down, him and his caddy. His the caddy's the like, caddy noticed the caddy went like, caddy's like, no. Yeah. Hadwin's a good sport about it. And then there was like tweets after he's on the plane. He's like, he's okay. I mean, he's okay. to do that. You never know. What if it's some fucking freak coming out there? You know, I guess so. Who knows? There's a lot of freaks out there now. Yeah, doing some fucking weird shit. There is a lot of freaks. You got to, you know, you got to protect it because it's it, 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 it turned into a free for all. It's like after a college game when they fucking rush the field. It looked like he made that putt, That's and no exactly. one expected him to make the seventy footer. No. So then all of a sudden, it's like security guards weren't even ready for people to come out and yeah. like celebrate like that. But the guy, I mean, if he had been in golf gear, it's like yeah, he was like the close. story. It's like the story of um, you know our our buddy Noah's dad, who was the great imposter, and the story is an E sixty. It's fucking great, ESPN. But he just said, you can get into any golf tournament if you just wear golf gear and you have a glove in your back pocket. He's like, they'll <laughs> let you walk right onto the range. They fucking think you're a player. They don't know. 
So, I mean, Hadwin had his sweatshirt on. He kind of looked like he was going on his fucking private bird back to wherever. He wasn't flying private. He was. Oh, I saw the picture. Yeah, he was coming out this way, but he wasn't private. No, I wasn't private. Get those guys. I mean, RBC, get those guys a bird back to the U.S. Open, no? RBC. Fuck you, RBC. Those get guys those, are like. Get those guys by the way, a private I told you all the, the banks in Canada are a fucking joke, by the way. <laughs> yeah. That is another story. But RBC, well, I was dealing RBC. With my own little, I've been dealing with my own little bank issue yeah. in Canada, actually, now you mention it. It's but. like, it's my money. Give it to me. They won't. No. It's a joke. Oh, we're going to put RBC on the milk carton, yeah, too. Yeah, RBC uh, Canada, you're on the milk carton. Presented by DraftKings, promo code Curfew Cali. You're on the milk carton, RBC. Curfew Figure it Kings. Out. Figure it out. Curf what did I say? Curfew Cali. Curfew Kings. Uh, real quick on the NFL draft combine. I, I, I see NHL. NHL. I see uh, Connor Bedard. Yeah. Who I still can't believe. How, how, how I'm going to say lean. See how thick his legs are, though? He's got fucking Sidney Crosby legs. Be better. Yeah. Why is he doing, like, if I'm the Chicago Blackhawks, or I, in fact, if I'm Connor Bedard's agent, yeah. like, to put the Bane mask on and have this poor kid huffing and puffing on a bike and to make him do the Wingate test, like, I don't know. Like, I'd be like, he's not doing it. If you don't want to yeah. draft him, then don't draft him. Like, well, what good comes out of, like, God forbid he gets hurt or God forbid if something bad happens. Like, I don't know. To me... <laughs> I guess everyone does it, and that's what makes hockey players great, I guess. But yeah. if I was the first overall pick, that's... I'd be like, I don't know if I'm putting that Bane mask on and fucking riding this bike till I pretty near die. But I will work the half wall for you next year at the United Center. Yeah. You know, I just, I don't know, it's something no, I thought you hit about. it right on the head, Obes. It's just hockey players are too nice. The yeah. fucking, those systems fucking fucked up. And it's a... The system's fucked up. The system. It's like the combine. For what? Like, what we for? all know Connor Bedard's the best player out there. Yeah, I know. They like, just, this, this just is... look at him. Look at the kid. He's fucking... It's, yeah. it's one thing making, you know, do a 40 yard dash, even though that does nothing no. for nothing. Now I get it. You know, use me as a prime example, yeah. right? When I was, I was a late round draft pick. If you're thinking about, you know, a bigger kid that then I get it, I got to jump on there. Or if you're even a second round, or if you're down the first round, I get it. There's, that's the way it is. We want to see what kind of shape you're in. But if you're Connor Bedard, arguably the next generational player, yeah. if I'm his agent, I'm like, do you really need to see this kid do the fucking VO2 in the wind gate? Do you want to watch him puke or hurt his leg or like, you never know. I what know. if he pulls it? Like, who I knows? Agree. He could pull a hip flexor. He should have just said he had a bad, uh, you know, bad hammy. He should have just been, instead of being on the fucking bike, he should be picking out what suit he's going to wear to the draft. No shit. That's the most important thing for you, Connor. Yeah. Where are you getting your just suit? Just working his DMs. Yeah. Where are you yeah, getting your suit? Where are you going to Nashville after you get picked first overall? Where's dinner? Yeah. That, not the VO2. Yeah. We, we, we know you're, you're in good shape. Trust yeah. me, I saw him. His waist is 24. He's in shape. No kid. Yeah. A guy's like, he's got biceps. He's got fucking quads on him. Kid's a hockey player. Yeah. I don't know. I just saw that and I was like, I got to talk to you about this. This to me, if I'm the first yeah. overall pick. We did that. Loops and I did that. And then we went for beers with Jerry that night in downtown Toronto. Went to the, uh, the brass rail back then. Good spot. Yeah. We were 19. Got kicked out of there with Craig Foster and Drew Jr. <laughs> the hard way they threw us out of there no. too. Oh yeah. I don't think the, I don't think the brass rail is there anymore, by the way. Really? Was that I on Queen Street? So. Uh, I don't can know. I have one of those. Uh, you can have whatever you want. I can't take a candidate. What a pass. Um, yeah. So good luck to all the draft picks. You know, listen, I saw that Fantelli kid last week. We talked about it. that kid's a big boy. The guy from Michigan. Uh, my eye test seeing my, my eye test seeing him. He had a nice suit on, yeah. good hair, yeah, big, he, lean. By the way, and he led the NHL network with Jackie and EJ he led that interview. That interview. Was he good? Yeah, he was. He was really good. I think the Ducks are getting a good one with him. So we'll see. I haven't only seen him play World Junior, so I, but I'm just going on the eye test of swag and size. He looked like a National Leaguer to me. Mm -hmm. He looked like a National Leaguer. So around the NHL, first of all, shout out to our boy Darren Pang, who we got to spend some time with, uh, going to the Chicago Blackhawks. Listen, it, 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 it was hard for him. Uh, he told me, it, you know, kept him up at night. So everyone knows how much he loves St. Louis. St. Louis loves him. But at the end of the day, he did the right thing. It's a business. For him to take this deal helps everyone else. It helps Shane Knighty. It helps... Tyson Nash, it helps whoever else is doing that role. So to Panger, good on him. Good for the Blackhawks. It'll be fun to watch him. Uh, do you want to tag that at all? Yeah, I mean, it's just his it's his hometown. And I, I just have to tell the story about him, what he said to MJ uh, as we were leaving the Grove. He's like, MJ, you know, thanks for having me out at the course. Just got to tell you. Yeah, and I was like, MJ, he's going back to, he's going back to Chi-Town where it all began. He basically said to MJ, like, I solidified the deal when they told me I'd have my little statue, me, my, my little white statue with my bald head Beside right yours. next to your fucking, your, your, you know, classic statue or whatever. Yeah. MJ laughed. And uh, anyway, it's great for Panger to go back to a team that he began with. And he's, 
listen, Panger's one of the best, if not the best guy to do in between the benches. And he's like, we love it. And Jonesy's leaving and Panger's going to be the guy. Sharpie that takes got over. hired by the Flyers today. He got hired by the Flyers. Yeah. Nice. Jonesy hired him. Yeah. Oh, to be senior advisor to the GM or something. Nice. That's a nice gig. And yeah, the, nice. That's the same gig that your former teammate Shane Doan got to go to Toronto. I mean, I think if your donor, you know, enough is enough. And what happened in Tempe, they're, you know, they don't have a rank. Who knows what's going to happen? Brad's in, in Toronto. You can go in and, and be in the hockey Mecca and, and learn the role even more. I, I think this is a great hiring for the Leafs and for donor, man. I think yeah. he's going to learn so much being there with Brad. I mean, cause they're getting right in the shit right away here. You know what yeah, I mean? I agree. I agree. No, it's, it's good. Donor. And listen, say what you say. Donor, um, he played the game the right way. Wore his fucking heart on his sleeve. And, you know, he's been Hockey Canada now. He's done some stuff with the Coyotes. This is a big time role for him. And, Huge. And Tree Living had, you know, Tree Living was our assistant GM in Phoenix at the time. Um, they know each other well. Donor needs to be, he needs to go in there and kind of help be the face of this and help turn this around. Because now there's a lot of cooks in the kitchen, right? You got Shani, you got Donor, you got Brad Tree Living. They're all big personalities, probably with a lot to say. So, you know, it's going to be, it'll be interesting to see how this plays out. I mean, listen, it, it, the clock is ticking. I mean, it's June 13th. July 1st is right around the corner. And I had Dave Pignota on Cooley's show yesterday, and he seems to think September is the deadline for, for Matthews. But come July 1, if Matthews wants to play out his contract, he can play out his contract and just fucking leave. Yeah. Like, I don't know as Brad Tree living, like, he still doesn't know what he's doing with Sheldon Keefe. He still doesn't announce that Keefe's going to be automatically back. Like, do you want to just let July one pass by and let Austin Matthews hold all the cards and just say, I'll play out my year and see you boys. Yeah. I, I got, I don't know, man. It's, it's going to be interesting to see what happens. So, uh, but yeah, Panger, all those guys, best of luck back up the Brinks truck presented by our good friends at Canada's promo code curfew Cali, the Kings, uh, Gavrikov two years, 5.8 bananas. Listen up. I think these are the type of deals like, the cap's going to go up in a couple of years or so they say who mm -hmm. like, who knows it should go up. I hope it goes up. Why not take a nice two year deal like this guy? See where it is. Cap goes up, you know, whatever, five, six, seven million dollars. What it's going to do. This is a great signing for the Kings. And for this kid, I was blown away at how good this kid was. Yeah, there. I know he's legit. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. great deal. When I think of this kid, I think about you saying like, man, now that the, you know, I've watched this guy now play, he got to LA. He's fucking, he's a beast all over the ice. And then, you know, chatting with Bill Zito too, it was, I think it just got announced. Bill Zito was like, this is a kid, like people like this kid. Yeah. You know, yeah, it was, it's a good deal. And um, you can tell that he, yeah. Like when Bill saw the signing that yeah. he was, a, well, he had uh, him in Columbus, yeah, yeah. right? But I think every GM would love to get a crack at this guy. There's not many guys like that out there. No, especially at that price. And it's a great deal for him. Mm -hmm. 5.8 bananas, take a little breather, have two good years, and then see where you can hit a home run here. And then obviously the Blue Jackets are at it again. Severson, this baby, back up the Brinks truck. Eight years, 6.25. You got to give me eight years again to come to Columbus. But Provorov and this guy now, I, I don't know, man. We'll see. Obviously, they're going to hire Babcock July 1. That's the rumor. It's a pretty good back end. Turn yeah. into, I don't know. We'll see what happens. Yeah, with yeah, the yeah, totally. bus. We might have to. They still got to live in Columbus. But they got to live in Columbus, but maybe we go there and try to get out of the Murfield Village. I, we can range that. We range that. Yeah, fuck yeah. I'm alumni, bud. Are you alumni? <laughs> Are you fucking alumni? We'll figure that out. Yeah. Hey, I told you they're gonna get us in the Panthers club. We would have stayed for game four. We would have gotten the Panthers. Club. I know. I know. But I, I, I showed you the text, right? Not yeah. even those old fashions in the Panther club were making me miss that flight. I was like, I'm out of here, bro. I hear you. That was a fucking hell of a way home. I was tired. <laughs> uh, the rumor mill presented by Life Force promo code curfew. Check it out. Uh, look good, feel good, play good. Life Force, baby. Listen, Tom Wilson. There's some. There's some. I would mind. There's some thunder underneath. LA this Kings. Guy. Yeah, that oh, would be. Tell some. me, he wouldn't look good at Staples with no bucket flying yeah, around. His the wife's Kings. a volleyball player too. Like, does the they live in about Hermosa. the beach? They live in Hermosa. I think it's perfect. I like this rumor mill. Yeah, Willie. He's a Hollywood Come type of guy, out, isn't he? Bud. He's got I mean, Hollywood hair. He's and got suits. great hair and suits. And they can use a little more toughness up they, front. Who couldn't use Tom Wilson on their team? Exactly. Well said. We're going to leave it at that. <laughs> Connor Hellback informed, this is not breaking news here, that he's not going to fucking sign with the Jets. UFA. No shit. No kidding. Fuck, he's put in his time. It's time to blow that squad up. Pierre-Luc Dubois again wants out. I'm giving this kid the benefit of the doubt because he's played Columbus and Winnipeg, but now he wants to go to Montreal. So we will see what happens. But Hellback, I mean, this guy deserves- Teams will be calling. He deserves to be a UFA, right? He deserves Shovel to sit Shovel day back. off fucking phones ringing out of the yin-yang. Big time. 
Saw Freddie Anderson this week. How's Freddie doing? Freddie's great. He's a UFA too. He's a UFA, and there's you know he talked about Gibby. He talked about this cat. He talks about um, someone else who who's another goalie that might be on the market. Carter uh, Hart. Carter Hart maybe on the move. Carter right? Hart. So anyway, but Freddie, I said what you did. By the way, what you did in the playoffs coming in. The look on your face in the fucking four or five overtime game was wow. something I haven't seen in goalies. Like you were so fucking good and stellar and you know, How does big that, reason. If, if your team could score, this is where, you know, you're in a different position, right? Yeah, they need to sign somebody that can score for sure. But he, Did you yeah, see he how his body good. felt? Yeah, he, he felt, felt good. He looks so good. good. He's in game. town. He's working out already. He's fucking feeling good. So I expect someone to step up and grab him. Like, right, they're, they're talking, I mean, words are out there that they're move, trying to move Jack Campbell, right? At Edmonton and see what they can. I and love then, Soupy Campbell, but who's taking that deal on? You got to hope that. With the Oilers right now, they need a starting goalie. I know. Right? If they had Freddie Anderson, fucking who knows what could. Yeah. Stuart Skinner, right, dude, was he's young. He's going to get maybe rookie of the year, but it's fucking not. He's not the guy. Not the guy. Right now, you only have McDavid and Matthews for two more years. Dry Sorry, Sorry McDavid and Dry Seidel. I know. Listen, if if I was Stuart Skinner's goalie coach, I would just practice rebound control all summer. I, I that's a question for Freddie. Is that easy or not? But like, Aiden Hill reminds me of Skinner to a certain extent, like same type of goalie. And Hill's rebound controls are so much better than Skinner's. I mean, Skinner kicks him out, and it's just like, geez, that's D man's nightmare. I mean, Edmonton's got their own list of problems besides just a goaltender. But I think you got to hope back. You got to hope that Jack Campbell bounces back, don't you? Yeah. Once he figures out his pads. Yeah. His right. Pads. Even when I told Fre Freddie, listen to our clip there, by the way. And he was like, I, I found that fascinating because it's one thing for a goalie to change mid season. When you do it in the playoffs, it's, it's nuts. Yeah. It's mid season. Nuts. He's like, it's crazy for a goalie. If, if you play with a goalie and in the middle of the season, he goes from Vaughn to fucking Cooper. Yeah. You're like, hey, bud, like, it's not the pads, all right? Even if a guy changes his, like, if he goes from go white tape get, to black tape, go you're like, get fucking drunk tonight with us. Yeah. And you're see, like, buddy, you know, it's not the tape. Like, yeah. anytime a guy would change the color of his tape, I'm like, fella, come on here. Yeah. Is that what we're uh, You need a slump buster, Is bud. that what we're yeah. at? Put your stick. Yeah, you do need Here, listen, let's yeah. go on the career. I got a spot. <laughs> I got a spot for you. I'll get you on the fucking score yeah, sheet. Just tomorrow. ride this fucking coattail right here. And it's, yeah. hey, that was funny yesterday. Um, Shout out, we bumped in. You, you text me like, dude, I just bumped into Nate McKenna. That yeah, mother's. mothers. Yeah, great. And I, by the way, I looked around. I go, how good is this fucking grocery store? Great grocery store. And he goes, store. Cogs told me it's the best. I had to come here. And then literally after I got done text with you, I went to the butchery to grab a nice little New York strip to fire up. And there's Nate Dog. And I go, dude, I was just talking up. He said he saw you. I go, how do you know about these? Like, these are veteran local spots. He's like, Cogs. Yeah. Cogs told me about mothers and, and the butchery. And I'm like, dude, you're going to love it out here. Yeah. You're going to love it. This is. This is perfect. Although he, it hasn't been sunny uh, here. So he's here for a while. He wants to tee it up. Let's tee it up with him. Yeah, yeah. Maybe next week we'll take him out. Yeah, we should. But it was just funny bumping into him like at the butchery. I'm like, I was, yeah, he walked doing? by and no one, of course, we're in Newport Beach. No nah, one knows anyone. Great. And That's... I'm like, yo, Nate. And he's like, hey. And I'm like, I'm like, yeah. And anyway, I'm like, what are you doing here? And he's like, I'm here for a couple of weeks working out. Um, and I'm like, random. But so do you think he's working out at the gym where Scott Prohaska is? Yeah, he is. I asked him if he was working out with Scott. He just said he was up at the Ducks facility. Yeah. So. I don't know, but I'll put him in touch and let him know. Like, I'm sure he knows like Amstutz is here and a bunch of guys are here. W whatever he needs. I said, listen, whatever you need, we got it here. There's, you know, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> whatever. We got, you, a, we need, got a guy. Whatever you need, we got brother. the golf. We got the beach. If you want to do a boys night out, we got that. We got whatever he wants. You know, Binger, if he wants to roll up a couple doobies. <sighs> Binger, do you still roll up doobs, bud, or you just buy them pre-rolled? No, I roll them up. It's, it, you got to have, it's the whole event. It's the holy. Ah, it's the holy. Hey, event. when you guys are going up for the golf tournament this weekend, Obes, it's only fifteen minutes from where I am. Oh, he yeah, wants us. He wants an true, invite. Eh? There, yeah. he? he wants an I, invite. I don't. Get, are no, you not to golf? You want to <laughs> stop by after? <laughs> just, eh? Where can we go in Santa Monica? Where are we gonna go? And I, I think you like the bungalow. Ah, you're a bungalow I used guy. To love the bungalow. Yeah, Fucking yeah. L A C C. The bungalow will be about an hour and a half on that day. Yeah. That's all you can yeah. Do. Where else L A C? Brought off Wilshire, right? LACC's is right, like right. Yeah. No, it's, yeah. Yeah. Brentwood. Beverly Hills. It's right down in the flats of Beverly Hills. Yeah, that's right. Uh, game five tonight up, dog. Is this is going to be it? We probably see the, we probably see that beautiful shot. I've listened. Every time I see that trophy, I'm like, uh, I get a little emotional on my couch. I know, but. And I wish, like, fuck, I wish I just. I wish one of those shots had to go I in. just wish Matt Sundin would have been the Matt Sundin from the Leafs my first year in Vancouver, and I still think we would have won the cup. I've but had a couple good looks, but. 
fucking ran into buzz sauce. How hard is it to win? It's man? hard, man. Like I'm just sitting back it's watching. Fascinating. It's just like so hard. Fascinating trophy to hoist, bud. Maybe someday we'll be a manage, maybe, maybe maybe management we'd, position. Maybe we'd have just a little bit better spot. Uh, we need get slapped to get hired as a GM and then try to get on with him and then maybe we'll win one. Yeah, right? it'd be nice to saddle up with the team. Maybe the team brings on missing curfew and then we get a ring one day. Does media get a ring? Yeah, fuck yeah. Yeah. Can we like party with the cup and everything? Yeah, Kiefer. hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. yeah, ask your boy Kiefer what he did with that cup last year, but he did some fun shit. hundred uh, percent. Up dog, your beauty, Max, Binger Hall Pass Media. That was missing curfew. Fellas.